All right, so Big Fat Mouth is getting us in trouble in different ways. And so we've looked at, uh, in this series, this last couple of weeks, we've looked at the idea of complaining. How when we, when we see things and we point out what's wrong with it and how it didn't meet all of our expectations, that can often get us in trouble. We talked about the idea of criticism, how when we are critical with others, not for the purpose of helping them get better, but simply for the purpose of tearing them down, that that is wrong. That that is not a way that we want to use our mouths in a way that would, would be beneficial to those who are hearing it. And last week, uh, Pastor Craig Groeschel, via video, challenged us in the area of lies. And really challenge us to not keep lying, but instead to speak the truth. That, that really, when you and I, when we uh, choose to tell lies, we're actually speaking the language of the devil, of the evil one. That's how he talks. And we don't want to be people like that. We want to speak and live uh, words of truth. Today, we're going to conclude our series with this idea of gossip. Gossip. So how, how many of us, we have ever heard someone share gossip. We've heard someone share gossip. All right, raise our hands. All right, many of us, probably all of us, all right? I'm not going to ask you if you are the gossip. I won't ask that, but many of us, we have heard gossip. We know what gossip is, and it seems like gossip is everywhere. Gossip is rampant. It seems to happen all the time. In fact, there are whole TV shows that are simply devoted to gossip. Here's the latest rumors. Here's the latest happenings. Here's what you don't know. There's magazines that are all about gossip. There are whole careers that are all based on sharing these little tidbits. And, and so we recognize again that it's part of our culture, but we ourselves, we find ourselves easily jumping in to being part of gossip. I mean, here we find ourselves in a situation where you're at a normal coffee, right? You're, you're meeting someone for coffee. It's a normal conversation until it turns. Hey, did you hear about so-and-so? And suddenly our heart starts to beat faster. Like, no, I didn't hear about so-and-so. But you're going to tell me about so-and-so. I can't wait to hear what you're about to share. And we kind of are drawn in. We sit up a little bit. We're, we're closer, we're more engaged. Why? Because we're about to jump in and hear Gossip, And so we find out again that it's kind of subtle, but it sneaks up on us and we find that it's kind of everywhere sometimes. And so we kind of find ourselves like that. We want to know, okay, what, what is the reason for that? Why is gossip so important? Why does it kind of get us wrapped up like that? Well, the Bible says this about gossip in Proverbs 18, verse 8. It says this, rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. Rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. Now, in that moment, you're like, rumors actually sound delicious, don't they? Like, like they're out there. I kind of want that. In fact, when I heard the word dainty morsel, I was like, you know what? I love Sour Patch Kids and, and Swedish Fish. You know, I, I love those. I, and then, you know, M&Ms. We don't, not peanut M&Ms because there might be allergies here, but every single one of us can enjoy M&Ms, like just chocolate, right? Dainty morsels, all right? None of us wake up going, you know what? I hope today to empty the bag of Swedish fish. None of us hope that, but we wake up going, you know what? I'm just going to have a couple. I'm just going to have a little bit there, and then we find ourselves the bag is empty, right? None of us say, you know what? I'm going to eat the whole candy jar uh, uh, of candy that's on my coworker's desk. We find ourselves walking by. Like, I'm just going to get one of those right there. I'm just going to get one of those. And then we find out later on, the jar is empty. We're waiting for our coworker to come back so they can fill their candy back up because we, we need those, right? So rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. And so here's what we're doing. None of us wake up one day. You know what? I hope today to be wrapped up in gossip. I hope that's my morning. It's going to be awesome. But we walk by and, hey, that rumor looks kind of interesting. Hey, hey, that gossip looks kind of delicious. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one of those and we find ourselves feeding our heart. You know what's interesting is even this bag, you probably can't say it, see it, but it says sharing size. All right, so what this is, we hear a good rumor and we're like, oh, I'm bringing that to Starbucks and I'm going to share these morsels with someone I'm talking to. Oh, I, I, I heard something really good. I'm not going to keep that to myself. I'm going to share that. And what's interesting, gossip just spreads and spreads and spreads so quickly and so easily. Why? Because they're dainty morsels that we all kind of enjoy sometimes. But these are more than just food. They actually can affect our heart. Here's what's interesting. Mark Twain kind of, this quote kind of wraps up lying and gossip. And it says this, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. 
Okay, so while the truth is still getting out of bed, that lie got up, got dressed, was already halfway around the globe before the truth could even catch up. And that's how gossip is. The, 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 the daintier or the juicier the morsel, man, the quicker it's going to spread. The, the quicker it's going to go out there. And it may not even be true, but that's not going to keep me from sharing it. In fact, if it's maybe not even true, maybe it's a little bit more, uh, maybe kind of a... Maybe, maybe even juicier, we're going to share it and it's going to spread even quicker. And we see again, that's not just our, our words. Now with social media, we can post things. We don't even check it. We can just hit the share button. We, we can just make, quickly pass this on. And whether it's a rumor or whether it's truth, we're able to jump into that gossip cycle and, and have it spread quicker than ever. Than, than ever. The thing is, but that's funny about gossip, or maybe not funny like haha, but funny like oh no, is that gossip is actually, the more it's shared, the more it can change. The message changes all the time. And part of that is because we're super busy, but part of that is because the world is super noisy that we don't even hear the message correctly. And what we hear may not be what we pass on and vice versa. To kind of further illustrate this, let's watch this quick video clip. So watch this. Um, Julia, I'm going to start with you. Everybody else line up on the appropriate dots over there. We will give you headphones. Twitch has the headphones. Okay, we'll start the music. Okay. All right, wonderful. Ready? Kendrick Lamar tried to fit his guitar in an overhead compartment. Apartments? Kendrick Lamar tried to fit his guitar in an overhead compartment. Kendrick Lamar went to the apartment. One more time, one more time. Kendrick Lamar went to the apartment. Okay. Entering the bar. One more time. Entering the bar. One more time. Okay. Okay, take him off. Okay. What did you hear? Ice cream. The car. One more time. Not what I okay, you. so what did you hear from me? Kendrick Lamar. You heard that part? Yeah. And then what did you hear? I heard enter the bar one more time. And then? I heard entering the bar one more time. And how did you hear ice cream? I don't know. Okay. This is the sentence. Kendrick Lamar tried to fit his guitar in an overhead compartment. Oh, okay. okay. So, okay. you didn't get one word, so you get zero points. <laughs> All right, so they didn't even get one word right, and yet that didn't help, uh, keep them from passing on what they thought they had heard. The same thing is true for gossip, right? Like, so as further it spreads, the further it's shared, uh, and we, we, the message can completely change. That doesn't keep us from just, hey, here's what I heard, I'm going to pass it on. We want to recognize again that gossip, again, is not just a childish thing. Gossip actually can be very, very hurtful. And many of us in here, perhaps, you would say, you know what, I don't know that just from uh, agreeing as a true statement. I know that because you've actually lived it. That you've actually experienced being hurt by someone talking behind your back. That you've actually uh, been uh, experienced either uh, being embarrassed or, or just, again, experiencing the pain because of gossip. And so I want to challenge us because, uh, like we shared a couple weeks ago with, with being critical, gossip is hard to see when it's in the mirror. Okay, when other people are talking, we understand, okay, you're gossiping, I get that. But when we're the one doing it, we're, we, might, we may not always recognize it. And so I want to challenge us to be open and aware. Maybe are, are we sharing gossip when we shouldn't be? Some of the ways that, that we are good at disguising this can be found in different ways. The, probably the best way that church people disguise that is that we, we, we just simply call it a, a prayer request. Okay, so we're in the circle, right? We're in the circle, and we're sharing prayer requests. And we're like, hey, you know, we should really pray for Jim. You know, he's... He's making some bad decisions. And we're like, ooh, what kind of bad decisions is Jim making? Well, well, you know, like Jim's married and there's been some issues there. And there's also this new co-worker. Oh, I shouldn't say anymore. Well, what else shouldn't you say? And then we kind of just go, we're kind of sharing these things under the guise of, oh, it's just a prayer request. We're just praying for Jim. 
Let me just remind us, okay? God knows the gym situation already, okay? So we're not informing God in that circle, okay? We're informing each other. That's what gossip is. And especially if Jim's not there, that's behind Jim's back. So we want to be mindful again. Hey, hey, if we're going to share to pray about Jim, we just say, hey, let's pray for Jim. Or let's pray for a coworker of mine. And that's it. Because God knows the situation already. And quite honestly, we don't need to know all the details. That's how a God prayer request can turn into gossip. Some of us also justify it. We'll go, well, well Jeremy, what if, what if what I'm sharing is true? Well, what if it actually is true? Is it okay to share something about somebody else who's not in the room with you? Is it okay to share it if it's absolutely true? Well, I want to remind you again that, that we're still called to share the truth, but we're called to share the truth in love. Okay, what is the point of sharing that truth? And Pastor Craig Rochelle says something I think that would, would fit perfectly into this. He says this, everything that is said should be true. However, not everything true must be said. Some of us are sharing gossip and sharing things. Well, we said, well, but it's true. Can I share it? And we might simply agree, you know what? It might be true. It doesn't mean you have to share it. It doesn't mean that you have the license to pass that on to somebody else, especially, again, if it's about somebody else and they're not in the room. If it's about somebody else and they're not on the email chain or, or, or a friend of yours on Facebook that you're tagging them so they can see it as well. We want to recognize, again, just because it's true doesn't mean it needs to be said. Because here's what the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. So again, our words matter. Our words have weight. And the outcome can either be life-giving or life-taking. Our words can build up or they can destroy. And those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Those could be negative consequences or they can be positive consequences. So the challenge is for us to go, okay, all right, I want to share God. I want to share words that are true and words that are encouraging and words that are life-giving. And I want to make sure that I am not under, uh, being part of gossip. And so we want to go, okay, well, who does gossip hurt? Who, who does gossip actually affect? Who does it hurt? Well, the first one is this. Gossip hurts the person that it's being spoken about. This is the most obvious one that gossip hurts. Gossip hurts the, the victim, if you will, the subject that we are talking about, that we are listening to. Gossip hurts people. In Proverbs 16, 28, it says this. A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. We recognize, again, that this may be more than just a proverb. Some of us would agree this is actually true in life. Maybe all of us would agree that. That a troublemaker plants seeds of strife, but a gossip can separate the best of friends. That if you have someone that you trust, that you are sharing something with, and then they blurt it around everybody else, you may not be as close as a friend as you were before they told that gossip, before they shared that gossip. When it comes to family, you have close family members and family members, and you're sharing this, and then suddenly everyone in the family knows. You're like, "What in the world? I only shared you. Uh, what was going on?" And, and now our family isn't as close because of gossip. You see, gossip hurts the one that is being spoken about. Maybe again that you you trusted someone and you shared, "Hey, you had a, you had a crush on somebody," and and you shared it. Hey, don't tell them, but I really really like this person. All of a sudden, it's on. You see it on Snapchat. You see it on someone else's uh, uh, Instagram, and you're like, "Wait, I thought I could trust you." And, and now there's embarrassment there, and there's hurt. We understand again that gossip hurts the one that it's spoken about. Gossip can separate the best of friends. So that's the first person who's hurt by gossip. The second person is this. Gossip actually hurts the speaker. Gossip actually hurts the person who is sharing the gossip. That there's actually understanding that, that, that you're thinking you're only going to hurt somebody else, but it actually is hurting us as we gossip. It says in Proverbs 25, verses 9 and 10, when arguing, arguing with your neighbor, don't betray another person's secret. Others may accuse you of gossip and you will never regain your good reputation. So here you have this strife going on. The, the, the uh, king, uh, Solomon gives an example here. Hey, when there's a conflict going on, you're arguing. In the heat of that moment, don't betray someone else's secret. Don't try to tear someone else down to get the focus off you. Because if you do that, others may accuse you of gossip and you will never regain your good reputation. Now, every single one of us, when we find ourselves hearing gossip, someone is sharing this gossip, 
Every single one of us has at least maybe even a momentary thought. If this person is sharing this gossip about someone else who's not here, I wonder what they're sharing about me when I'm not here. Every single one of us have at least had that thought. Okay, if, if they're quick to gossip and share this, I wonder, I wonder what the prayer request is about me when I'm not at group that week. I wonder what is being shared. And every single one of us will go, okay, this is not good. And so Solomon says, listen, if you are going to be accused of gossip, recognize it's going to hurt your reputation. You'll be known from now on as someone you don't trust that person. They're going to share it. Don't confide in that family member. They're going to burden everybody else. It hurts a reputation. It hurts the one who's, who, who's speaking it. And none of us go, you know what? When someone's gossiping, you know what? You are giving me a great example. Someday I hope to be as good a gossip as you. None of us aspire to be the gossip, right? None of us aspire to, to be the one who can't be trusted. And yet that's the reputation that, that is hurting us if we're willing to share these things. In fact, if we're going to talk badly about people who are not around, quite honestly, that says a lot more about us than it does about the person that we're talking about. We are actually communicating a lot more about actually who we are than the one that we're sharing the rumor about. So we want to be mindful again that sharing gossip hurts the speaker. Gossip hurts the victim. It hurts the speaker. And then thirdly, gossip hurts the listener. Gossip hurts the listener. We think we might be innocent bystanders, but actually we are part of the problem. Gossip actually hurts us. In Proverbs 17 verse 4, it says, Wrongdoers eagerly listen to gossip. Liars pay close attention to slander. All right. So if we are listening to gossip, guess what we are? We're actually doing wrong. We're actually sinning in that moment. Why? Because we're part of the, of the problem. We are find ourselves right there in the issue because we are giving an opening ear. And then often we'll receive that. And then whatever we heard, we're going to pass that on as well. So gossip hurts the listener. Quite honestly, in the words of Admiral Akbar, if we listen to gossip, it's a trap. All right? So don't fall into that. Don't fall into that trap at Starbucks. Well, I'm just innocent. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're actually part of the problem. And we find that it's actually hurting us as well. Because here's the truth. What we permit, we are actually promote. We are actually promoting. So if we allow someone to talk about it, about a coworker, guess what? We're basically going, keep going. Because I'm cool with it. If we allow someone to run down a family member and with their words and with, their, with what they're sharing, we're basically saying, hey, I'm okay with that. Keep, you have free reign to keep doing that. What we permit, we actually promote and we find ourselves as part of the problem as well. So if gossip hurts everybody involved, we need to do whatever we can to shut gossip down. We need to shut it down. So how do we do that? Two ways. The first one is this. We need to guard our ears. How do we shut down gossip? We guard our ears. Oh, be careful, little ears, what we hear. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. We are able to recognize that as we hear gossip, it is our job, if we're going to recognize that it hurts everybody involved, including us as a listener, it is our job to lovingly seek to shut gossip down. To stop it continuing. It's going to stop with us. It's going to stop with this conversation. So one of the easiest ways to stop gossip is can be found in just asking this one question. Why? Why are you telling me this? Why are you sharing this request? Why are you feeling the need to, to, to give, to spread this rumor? Why are you telling me this? Now, at the very least, this question actually forces a mental inventory. To at least begin to say, okay, why am I sharing this? But as a follower of Christ, it's actually not just a mental inventory, it's actually a spiritual inventory. We can go, okay, what am I trying to gain by sharing this? What am I hoping to do by passing on this gossip? Some of us go, well, you know what? That, that question might be, might be too combative. Is there another way to say that? And Jesus actually gives us another way, and it simply is, is this. Have you had a chance? Have you had a chance to speak with whoever it's about, about this? Uh, you're sharing me this time out, time out, before you go further. Have you had a chance to talk with Jim about what you're sharing? Have you had a chance to talk with that family member about what, you're, what, you, what they confided with you, what you're giving to me free reign? Have you had a chance to talk with him about your concerns about this? And again, this actually 
is scriptural. It actually goes back to the way that Jesus taught us to, to live and interact with others. In Matthew 18, verse 15, Jesus says this, If another believer sins against you, go public and point out all the offenses to every avenue. Immediately tweet about it, post about it, Snapchat. I mean, get it out there. Gather a group of people who will pray about this and let everyone know. And that's not what Jesus said. He says, go privately and point out the offense to who? To the one who has sinned against you. This is just a, no, you know what? I, I, I feel like I'm, I, you've offended me or you've sinned against me. Again, this might be a, an actual offense or it could be a perceived offense because again, we have the headphones on too. We don't always hear things correctly. And so we say, listen, I, I, this is, is this true? Is this what's going on? Let's work this out. And, he's, and Jesus says this, if the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. Listen again. The goal is to, to have a relationship that's restored and, and strong once again. And so Jesus is saying, listen, don't go public with that. Go private. Be, be willing to have a conversation. Say, hey, here's what I heard. Or, or here's, what I, here's what I think I heard. Or here's what I think you did to me. And let, let's make sure that we're on the same page with this. And so uh, we can ask that question. As a, a gossip, as we are hearing gossip, it's our job to guard our ears. Hey, this sounds like it went from prayer request to gossip. Man, what? What made you share that? And again, that may not have to be in the whole group, but it definitely is to happen in a private conversation. Hey, what's, have you had a chance to talk with that person? Have you had a chance to go with that? We have the ability to, to shut gossip down. And, and if someone is not willing to go to that person, or someone is not willing to keep it private, someone is not willing to, to stop rumor sharing, then ultimately we have a choice to make. In Proverbs 20, verse 19, it says this, a gossip goes around telling secrets. So, don't hang around with chatterers. It might ultimately lead to the point of saying, you know what, I can't have coffee with you anymore. I, I can't spend time with you because you're continually sharing gossip and I can't, I can't do that. And so the Bible's very clear. Hey, listen, I might say, you know what, I'm going to limit my hang time with you because it's not good for my heart. Because what you're sharing are dainty morsels, juicy tidbits that are going right in my heart. They're affecting me, so I need to guard my heart. So one of the ways to shut down gossip is to guard our ears. And secondly, we need to close our mouth. Close our mouth. How do you shut down gossip? Close your mouth. I love how the Bible, again, sometimes there's things you get to study, go deep, and try to figure out. There is sometimes the Bible is absolutely plain. Okay, so here, uh, Solomon, the wisest man ever, dumbs it down for all of us people in 2018. And here's what it says in Proverbs 21, 23. We're all going to learn a verse today. It simply says, watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you will stay out of trouble. Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut. And you will stay out of trouble. I love just how the Bible is, can just be so blunt sometimes. Hey, quit yapping. Hey, quit talking. Hey, quit posting. All right? Stop it. Watch your tongue. Keep your mouth shut. And you will stay out of, your out of trouble. Some of us, our moms taught us that. Okay? If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Right? That's, that's it right there. Right? So I think we should repeat this. All right? So let's all together say this. All right? Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut. And you will stay out of trouble. Okay, for this time, open your mouth, right? So here we go. Watch your tongue, keep your mouth shut, and you will stay out of trouble. Okay, this isn't only for teens. It's not only for our kids. This is for all of us. And so we want to be mindful of that, that sometimes the, the gossip just needs to stop by just me not sharing, not talking, not going further with it. And we want to recognize again that this is the beauty of social media. Just because it's there doesn't mean we have to follow it. You can unfollow people who keep sharing gossip. You can even, a great feature, you can snooze them for 30 days. It's just saying, I love you, but pause. I can't do it. I need a month break. All right? So we're going to do that, right? So we're going to kind of just kind of understand again that I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to close my mouth. You know what? Even again, as ourselves, we can put the phone down. We don't have to text everything we're thinking or post everything that goes through our mind and what we've heard. No, no. We can stop it also. We can close our mouth and, and do our part to shut gossip down. Because here's the reality again. It goes back to the golden rule. Right? Jesus says this. Do to someone, do unto others as you would like them to do to you. If we don't want to be gossiped about, then let's not gossip about others. We want to recognize again that this is a, a cycle that we can be a part of. Why? Because gossip hurts 
the one that's spoken about, gossip hurts the speaker and gossip hurts the listener. Gossip hurts everybody. So we're going to do our part to shut gossip down. So today, I just want to conclude with kind of actually a serious conclusion, not just a, a message conclusion. Here's the thing. We've been talking about the problem with gossip the last few weeks, the problem with complaining, of being critical with the idea to tear down only, of, of lying. But we've kind of been playing, a, a kind of, quite honestly, a little shell game. Because we've actually said that this is about our big fat mouth. But actually, it's not really about our big fat mouth at all. The Bible says, again, that our mouth, our tongue, is not the issue. There's actually a deeper issue. There's actually a deeper thing that we need to address. And the problem for every single one of us is that we have sin-stained hearts. Our heart is actually the problem of the words we say. Our heart is actually the problem with the things that we, we, we speak when we speak for evil, when we tell and spread lies and gossip. Jesus says this in Luke 6, 45. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Then he says this, and don't miss it. What you say, what I say, what we say flows from what is in our heart. We recognize again that if we are speaking words that tear down, words that destroy, then that's actually not just our words, that in our heart there is something wrong that needs to be fixed, that needs to be addressed. That we recognize again that, that we are, are choosing to do something with our words. And it's not a mouth issue. It's actually a heart issue. The Bible says that our tongue is like the rudder of a ship or a boat. The rudder is a very small part of the boat, but it actually uh, allows uh, the, the, the person to control the boat, to the set of direction, to steer the ship a certain way. If the tongue is the rudder, our heart is actually the captain because the, the heart is actually telling the tongue what to do. What we say flows from what is in our heart. And so what you and I need again is not just different words. We actually need a different heart. We actually need a, a heart that's been transformed and is being transformed. And so we, we need that for our church. We need that for our lives. We need that for our families. We need that personally. And here's the good news. When we recognize that our words are really coming from our heart, we can address what's really going on. For instance, we said, ask the question, hey, why are you sharing this? Why are you talking this way about this person when they're not here? Often, the heart issue is, we believe that if I can tear someone else down, it makes me look better. If I can say how someone else's marriage is falling apart or, 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 or uh, I'm rocky, going through a rocky pat, uh, patch, it makes us seem like we're doing pretty good in our marriage. If I can say that someone else you know, has a crush on this person, then it takes the focus off my broken heart that I've been broken before and I can damage somebody else. In only, in only our sin-twisted way, we think if I make you look less, it makes me look more. That's what sin does. It doesn't make any sense, and yet that's what we believe over and over and over again. And so our big mouth and our, and our evil heart says, listen, if I can make you look weak, that actually makes me look strong. But that's not what the gospel says. That's not what the good news of the Bible says. That's not what God offers to you and to me, not only to offer us a transformed heart, but to continue to transform our hearts. The gospel says this, no, 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 no matter what we do, we are weak. We are weak, but our God is strong. Our God is able to overcome. Our God is able to, to prove his reckless love to us. Our God is able to make a way through uh, the, 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 the sea and the flooded waters and to actually clear a path and to actually recognize that we are able to be children of God, that God offers us a brand new heart. And so we recognize again that when, when we get into the word of God, we recognize that we've been created for a plan and for a purpose. We can say, you know what? I can trust God with my heart. When we get into the word of God and realize that God's created us for good works, we can say, you know what? I can trust Jesus. And then recognize again that not only has he given me things to do that are, that are God honoring, but he actually will be faithful to complete the work that he's given me to do. It also goes back to God. When we realize again that God's able to transform our hearts or to continue to transform our hearts, we don't have to tear other people down anymore. We can say, God, no, 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 I don't need to tear them down to make me look strong. I need to recognize that I am weak and you are strong. 
And you are the one who's able to lift me up. And you're the one who's helped me to overcome. You're the one who's able to transform my heart and change me from the inside out. And so we want to recognize again that for every single one of us, there's hope. There's hope today. And the hope is not just that we'll get our words better. But the hope is that God offers us a new heart. That God offers us a transforming heart. That he is continually chipping away the old, I'll use my name, he's chipping away the old Jeremy and making me, the old Jeremy go away and making me instead look more and more like Jesus. This is what the idea of sanctification is, that we're looking more and more like Christ. And that God, as you're following Christ, that's what he's doing for you. He's chipping away the old you, the old thoughts, the old heart. And he's giving us a new heart, giving you a new heart as you are following Christ. And we see again that our heart goes first and then our mouth changes. In Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, it says this. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But then verse 10 says this. It says, one believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, resulting in and salvation. So the way that salvation works is that first, God gives us a new heart, a heart that's able to believe that Christ has risen from the dead, that Christ gave his life for us, a heart that's able to recognize that he is the way, the truth, and life, which results in righteousness. And as God transforms our heart, then our mouth can follow. And one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. So we see again, Jesus says, listen, what, what comes out of your mouth is the overflow of your heart. God says, let me give you a new heart first, resulting in righteousness, and then your mouth will follow, allowing us to be saved. We recognize that it always starts with the heart, and that's not a work that we can do. Only God can do that. And so as we wrap up this series, I want to encourage you, how's your heart? How's your heart? Because what's in our heart comes out of our mouth. Is God transforming your heart? Are you open to God, continuing to work in your heart, or have you shut God down? No, no, that's enough. I got it from here. I would encourage you, don't have that be your attitude. Have your heart be open to what God's doing. Maybe you've never given your heart to God, never had God give you a brand new one, you've never had a heart of belief. I would encourage maybe even today is your day to believe and receive what God is offering to you, life and love and grace and hope forever. I would encourage you, how's your heart? Because how your heart is will affect our words. I would encourage you, let's live a transformed heart and give God access to continually transform our heart each day. Let's pray. Let's pray. I encourage you to close your eyes and bow your heads. We just want to spend a few moments just to wrap up our series going again before the Lord. Father, today I thank you again for this series. I thank you for your word and the truth that actually does transform our hearts. And God, sometimes your word is, is deep and requires study. Sometimes your word is just so obvious. Like simply watch your tongue. Keep your mouth shut you'll stay out of trouble. God, thank you for the power of your word. God, help us not just to hear it, but to apply it. Maybe you're here today and say, you know what? I want to be someone who speaks life. I want to be someone who encourages. I want to be someone who is able to be trustworthy. So I, I commit to guard my ears and to close my mouth when necessary and, and to open my mouth when necessary to encourage and to speak love to those around me. If that's you, say, you know what? I, I'm willing to have my heart be used by God so that he would use my words in an honoring way. Would you just raise your hand? I want, to, I want to pray for you right now. Would you just raise your hand, God? I want you to use my heart and my words in an honoring way to encourage others this week. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Who's wanting to do that? There are many of us here. Let's pray. Father God, we pray for those who have their hands up. God, I pray that you would again transform our hearts and chip away the old us. God, sometimes our mouth is so quick to speak. Our, we think our mouth gets in trouble, but God, you should point it out that it's our heart. So God, you have our hearts this week. Chip away the old us. Instead, give us words that will encourage and to build up, to strengthen, to speak life into people, to show that we're trustworthy, that we want to honor you in every area of our life, including our words. Maybe you're here today and you would agree that your heart does not belong to God. You've never given your heart to God. You've never received salvation from Him. But you know that today that needs to change. And you're ready to, to receive grace and hope and forgiveness. We said earlier, the reason we tear others down is to make ourselves look better. Here's what, the, here's what the Bible says. That there's no way you and I can make ourselves look better before God. We are sinners. We've all fallen short of God's glory. We've all gone our own way. We've all tried to play God and we've, we're lacking. We can't do it. But that's how God made us. 
God made us weak so that we would turn to him and find strength and find life and find hope. So here's what God did. In our sin, God chose to love us. In our rebellion against God, God chose to rescue us. And he rescued us by sending his son, Jesus, to live a life without sin, to lay his life down so it actually traded places with us. So he was able to die and pay for our sins or able to receive life as if we never sinned at all. And so because Jesus died, he was buried. Three days later, Jesus rose again. The grave that held Jesus is empty. Jesus is over life. He has overcome our sin. He has overcome the grave. And he offers you life today. As you're here today and you say, you know what, I've never received that, but I believe that today. We believe that God's already at work. And he's offering this invitation to you. We encourage you to receive that today. Here's how you receive that. You simply pray before the Lord. Jesus, today, I believe. I can't explain it. But today, I believe in my heart that you are God. That Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. That you died for my sins. I believe that you are Lord, that you were buried, and that you rose again. So Jesus, today, I confess my need for you. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. You are my Lord. From this moment on, you have my heart. Give me a new heart. Help me to follow after you every day of my life. As you pray that, as you believe that, as you confess that, salvation is yours as a gift from God. We'd encourage you to receive that, live in light of that today. Don't put that off. Receive a new heart. Receive salvation right now in this very moment. All across this room, whatever God is saying to us, let's say yes to him. Father, you are, and you provided the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, you change everything. And that includes our heart. And that includes our words. May we honor you, Jesus, this week as our Lord and our Savior. In your name we pray. Amen.